Freedom Radio app. Live on Capital Radio 91.6 FM. All right, all right, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Freedom Radio Hour. I'm your host, Adam Cruz, and I have my fantastic co-host right here. Eddie Nicholas, what's up, beautiful people? And welcome to 91.6 FM, the heartbeat of Sedan. What up, my good buddy, Mr. Cruz? Tell us what's going on in the world of music, news, and all the carrions on that we know these people want to know. Oh, my God. All I got to say is disarray, disarray, disarray. <laughs> I love that word, disarray. Yes, everything seems to be in a disarray. Well, of course, let's t- let's give a moment to let our viewers and our listeners know that the Freedom Radio Hour is here not only giving you fantastic music, but we're here to be your number one source for music, business news, and trends from around the globe. Oh, I'm so excited. We're on Capital Radio 91.6 FM and on the web at dwopmusicradio.com. First out of the gate, let's talk about Mr. Quincy Jones. The magic man. The, the magic man who does man himself. music galore. The yes. one who I would dream to work with. I know. What I know. about him? What night, about him? When the other night when you and I did a radio interview, we talked about you who our favorite. Quincy. Uh-huh. I did say Quincy, right? It's funny that we're talking about him. But And essentially what's happening is this. Quincy Jones is, is the man behind many of Michael Jackson's biggest hits, including Beat It, Thriller, and so on. I could just do a whole list of the accomplishments that Mr. Jones has done in his uh, tenure as a composer and a producer in the music business. Anyhow, uh, they have an arrangement, of course, as you can imagine, Mm -hmm. between Quincy Jones and Michael Jackson as they worked on these projects. Uh, Now with the the untimely passing of Mr. Jackson, you have his MJJ, which is the estate of Michael Jackson, looking after his affairs. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jones right now is in litigation. He is suing Michael Jackson's estate. Now, you would think, okay, you know, after all these years, Eddie, you made a really good point. Isn't this man filthy rich? Yes. Well, when you hear what I have to say, <laughs> maybe you'll filthy think differently. Richer. <laughs> yes, he wants, perhaps, but take a look at, take a listen to this. So, uh, Mr. Jones isn't coming for uh, Sony, who's the, the company that, the label behind uh, Michael Jackson material that he's talking about. Um, he's coming for them legally. Not because of, say, old back royalties or something mm-hmm. like that, some sort of negligent behavior on the part of the label. What he's arguing is this. He says that you, Sony, have been shortchanging Michael Jackson, his royalty payments. So, therefore, you're shortchanging me. Oh, okay. So, okay, go ahead. Okay. So, what do, why, do, why am I saying that the, the allegation here is that they've been uh, shortchanged, Quincy Jones and Michael? Because... Um, Essentially, the legal team for Quincy Jones is arguing that the way that they look at the downloads should be looked at as licenses. Let me say it again. So right now, Sony had a deal where they pay 15% royalties to the downloads. Mm-hmm. That, that anytime somebody downloads Michael Jackson, right? Quincy Jones is saying, uh-uh. You ha- should have treated these as licenses, not downloads. So in other words... The agreement says if it's a license, if you're trying to license Michael Jackson, I, Ms. Quincy Jones, get half, 50%. Mm-hmm. So you should have treated those downloads as half, not 15%. So again, Mr. Jones says, therefore, you are shortchanging Michael Jackson, his due royalties, and me, because I'm due a certain share as well. That's problem number one. Okay. But in the reference of downloads, downloads, from my understanding, downloads are not equated with licensing. Downloads are just for you to purchase and play on your own thing. So how does he come about trying to apply mechanical rights for something that people are trying to purchase that they can own? I love you, Quincy, but... (laughs) Well, here's the thing. I think because you have someone like a Michael Jackson, which... After um, after his passing, mm-hmm. there was a change in which, that fiscally speaking, they looked at his material. Mm-hmm. Evidently, when you pass, if you're somebody of the stature of a Michael Jackson or a Beatles or something like that, when you pass, that catalog is pre- was is sold and licensed at a premium. So Mr. Jones's team is arguing that you can't continue to put boxes into the same contractual agreements as we did prior because mm-hmm. the man is not fast and his stuff is worth a lot more. And therefore, you owe him more, and, therefore, and as a result, you owe me more. And I can understand that because we have seen the amount of money that streaming and those other services bring in. Right. And that has been a complaint from a lot of the artists that the streaming, the monies from that streaming are not in touch with how people should actually be paid. Exactly. You know, especially when we look at how people were paid back in the day. Right. So, you know, it's 2016, get ready to go on to 2017. 
they got to come up with a better way to pay people right. to get paid. So it's, I see that's his, argument his number one. Mm-hmm. Argument number two is that um, according to the contract. When he passed, Michael Jackson passed away, they began doing re-edits and remixed projects, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jones is alleging that he ought to have been offered first right to remix the material himself, and he was not offered that. So therefore, they are in breach. So he's going to court to argue these two points, that the downloads should be considered licenses, therefore garnering him and Michael Jackson's estate more money, and that he should have been given uh, first right of refusal on the remixes when they went around doing it. Now, that's in the agreement that he had in place. Now, if they're in breach, there are damages as a result of this. So So, that's what they're arguing. Let me hear correctly. Yes. So Quincy Jones had in place that any of whatever select material that he's on and that I presume co-wrote. I'm, I'm presuming co-wrote. Well, at least it's cited as a product, producer, producer and therefore whatever. is entitled to royalty. Because yes. again, um, you know, why would I want to ask him if I want to do a re- if I need a remix of something and I know he's not going to give me what I, you know, I, Quincy, you're one of the gods. Yes, but you have an agreement in place that gives you first right of, repro- of refusal. That's you. If you're Quincy Jones, that's the agreement. That means I'm so good that you can't just put any old remix of Michael Jackson out before hitting me up first. Not for my okay, but to give me the opportunity to remix my stuff, my, the material I was involved with originally first. That's what that first right is. It's not saying oh, that okay. you need to hit me up for approval. It's about giving me, Quincy Jones, the, the right to remix the material first. You see? And when you don't do that, for someone who originally produces the record, that's a problem. Oh, okay. Can you see Quincy Jones doing a fierce old house mix? I, I, I know. Right? <laughs> but if you think about it, I think what they mean by remixes in the Quincy Jones world is, is not at all what it you and I are thinking, we'll thinking about. <laughs> Well, let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk more about uh, possible viruses hitting these streaming services. And we're going to be talking about a new NBC show that's coming up. We'll give you details. Where? 91.6 FM, the heartbeat of the day. Come back, y'all. Freedom Radio app. Live on Capital Radio 91.6 FM. What up, beautiful people, and welcome back. I'm Eddie Nicholas, and we're so glad that you came and you are joining us on 91.6 FM, the heartbeat of Sudan. I'm here and going to follow up with some more information with my cool buddy, Mr. Adam Cruz. And you're deep in the zone right here on the Freedom Radio Hour. Deep in the zone. Yes. So uh, last we broke, we were talking about the latest regarding Quincy Jones Mm -hmm. and his lawsuit uh, against Sony, who's a label behind Michael Jackson's material. Uh, uh, In essence, what we're talking about is how Quincy Jones, understanding his agreement, is coming for Sony Music because he feels that he's being underpaid and Michael Jackson's estate is being underpaid in terms of royalties. Mm -hmm. So he's fighting that. But that's not unlike what you see a lot of days. You see, a lot of times these agreements happen way, way, way back in the day. And the terminology to deal with the advances that happen are not Not in in place. place. Mm -hmm. So when you have somebody with the savvy of a legal team of Quincy Jones, you can imagine the loopholes that exist from the antiquated language uh, in a contract that you signed decades earlier. So that's why these things tend to come back again. It's not so much that Mr. Jones is being accused of being greedy, saying wanting more and more. It's more about making right a wrong in his argument. Mm -hmm. So we'll see the latest around that. But the other thing that we're noticing around streaming services that you have to be careful out there. If you're a user, somebody that says, I don't want to pay to uh for my ten dollars a month to join Spotify. I'll elect to choose the free Free, service. mm -hmm. You know, they have a free tier. And that free tier, when you listen to that music, the royalties are paid to the artist through the ads that they make you listen or watch through before you listen to the product. That's the set. That's the system that's in place now. Mm-hmm. The problem is not from your phone, but if you download Spotify to your desktop, a desktop computer, some users are complaining that they're getting a virus. Mm. You see, initially you're thinking, okay, virus. That means you're downloading it from some suspicious some uh-huh. place, right? No, this is coming from the Spotify uh, download site itself. Um, so Spotify had to issue a statement, of course, to say, yes, we're aware of the, I'm paraphrasing. Yes, I know we're aware of the issue, of, but they basically traced it to one advertisement. Mm. So, so let me say this again. So you're signing up for the free tier. You don't want to pay it to Spotify. You're enjoying the music, but you have to watch and listen to the ads. But the ads might have a virus. 
But you would think that they would scan all of that stuff first. That's what before I'm putting saying. It in. And not only that, it sounds to me one of the, well, you know I'm always. I know it. I know. <laughs> but let's hear it because it's a um, good point. You know, if, you, if you're one of these people that are always looking for something unscrupulous or, or, or corrupt, you would say, well, wait a minute. If this is coming from Spotify and they are well aware of it, could this be a possible way for them to get people to the point where they're like, well, I'm not going to download the free tier. And they would suggest, well, if you're having problems with our free tier, please go to our premium for blah, 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 such a month. Blah, right. blah, blah, blah. That's a and very there, good point. And there we will take care and make sure that all of our material is scanned and virus free, you know, et cetera. That's right. what it sounds like to me. But Yes, you know, I, would, I get that spin. From their mm-hmm. perspective, that's a good way to spin it. However, my argument, my counter argument would be like, well, whether I paid for it or, or if it was free, you can't guarantee me, Spotify, that I'm not going to have to deal with a virus on my computer. Why? Mm-hmm. Because you didn't catch but this one what after that, the fact. Uh-huh. So what's to say it's not included in the premium tier? That's the version that they say you pay so into. You pay, pay into. Mm-hmm. So I'm feeling like no matter what, they don't have a so they don't have a good enough stable. Not just Spotify. I argue that all of the streaming outfits don't have a, a better grip on the security measures around streaming, around download, and, uh, and around how to uh, protect us as consumers mm-hmm. from things like viruses or just being being able to illegally rip the material mm-hmm. so that these artists could be protected in some way. You know, I find it fascinating that we're dealing with viruses from a streaming service. You used to mm-hmm. think that. It comes to an email, or mm-hmm. perhaps if you download a software product that's not streaming service, you think streaming would be covered. And for some of you people that look at the little naughty, nasty videos. Yes, <laughs> you're right. But it's true, though, man. I mean, a lot of this stuff happens when you uh, when you think that you're viewing something or downloading somebody something that is secure. It's mm-hmm. not secure sometimes. No, it's not. So be careful. Uh, the other version, the other thing I want to talk about with respect to uh, streaming and what's happening is how it's being over time. It's starting to permeate popular culture. You see, for a while, streaming was this sort of weird anomaly, this thing that no one really understood. They were more into the digital download. That was very popular initially. So now when streaming came in, you're like, well, I'm not sure how this is going to really look. People had to have a certain uh, type of connection on the internet. Do you remember when it first Mm -hmm. came out, you had to dial up? Mm -hmm. And so the idea of streaming media or watching a film online is just was, you're not going to do that. You don't have the bandwidth or the speed. But now everything is so fast that you can essentially stream material at a moment's notice from your phone and from a computer. Mm -hmm. Well, popular culture started to take more notice of the power of streaming. And now it's getting into TV, television. We're going to find out what's going on. Let's take another break. When we come back, we'll break down how streaming and a brand new TV show is going to be connected. You'll find out more here on the Freedom Radio Hour. Where? 91.6 FM. Freedom Radio Hour. And we're back live on Capital Radio, 91.6 FM, and on the web at dwildmusicradio.com. You're deep, deep in the zone right here on the Freedom Radio Hour, where your number one source for music business news and trends from around the globe. Right now, we're talking about TV and streaming. Mm-hmm. What a combination. So check it out. There was a Norwegian television show called The Stream. Okay. That the U.S. is now adapting for an American version. I love a lot of these shows. You ever notice that a lot of your favorite shows will have some sort of British origin? They or... always do. Sanford and Son. Where I didn't know that. <laughs> where did Sanford and Son come from? Oh, oh. Lord, I can't think of it right now. It's but from it, another thing? It's from England. Oh. Um, it was called, I want to say Pickford and Son, but I think I'm wrong. Those of you um, TV historians, you let like us comment know. Comment and let that. us know. Yeah. You know, let us know. But that's where Sanford and Son, Sanford oh. and Son came from a British television show. Right. That right, was right, over right. in England that they brought over to here. Well, evidently now there's a Norwegian, Norwegian television show called The Stream mm-hmm. that American uh, NBC here in the States is adapting uh, for release. So what is a show about? The stream is very simple. What it does is it allows a platform, so NBC is going to create a website where anybody, they do mean anybody, can upload their video of them singing. Okay. I don't mean to cut you off. But Go I'll ahead. Cut you off a bit. That sounds just like America's Greatest, the little television show where people send in their little videos, their little stream videos of America's... Funniest videos or funniest, something? Funniest, yes. Yes, but this is going to be like an American, American Idol style. Idol style. Or okay, like a voice, music. the voice or the X Factor, okay. whatever you call it, a singing contest, okay. basically. So the stream works like this. Anybody, and they do mean anybody, can upload their content onto 
their website, which you know they're capturing your email address to market to you later, but mm-hmm. that's a sidebar. Anyhow, after you upload your content, they're allowing people to vote based on the time, how many times it is streamed. That means how much, how many times you're watching the clip of said performer performing a song. So they're counting the stream. Okay, so it's not like voting in a poll. This is the you have to they watch it, and, to they'll watch ca- it. Ca- and they'll catch the stream count. So those that have the highest stream count, let's say it's the top ten or twenty, those then will be invited to a live show where those then will be voted down, uh, voted down so they get to the one. Mm-hmm. And so they're using streaming counts now to find out where the next big star is going to be. Can you imagine? Yes. So here's the thing. <laughs> There's a lot about this, though. Like, it's also a bit popularity contest because these outfits tend to, you can vote over and over again. Mm-hmm. People have ways of working around the technology or the, 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 the firewalls to vote multiple mm-hmm. times. And sometimes even the contests encourage you to vote, to vote multiple times. So is this a real barometer for finding the next big star, if you will? Well... You know, as we're going into 2017, nothing should surprise us. Right. Because everybody's trying to find a way to make a buck. Right. And, you know, with this new service that you're talking about, you know, is not only can you stream it on tele- television, but you're going to be able to stream it on your telephone, any apparatus that you have access to that has a streaming right. capability. Right. So, you know, another way for them to get into your living room, to get into your house. To entertain you <laughs> to and entertain get your money you, eventually. Get your money eventually. Yeah. Or your time. Or your time. Uh huh. And that's the thing. Time, which many of us really don't have because time moves so quickly. Yes. So... They want your time for a short span, but they want those dollars. Yes, time is in. money. Now, is there that. a cost for you to enter into this it doesn't, contest? It doesn't indicate, according to the articles that I've researched, that there's a cost so far. But you know there's cost to get you eventually to the live show. I mean, everything is in pay for. you got to get your outfit together. Mm-hmm. Whatever you have to do as an individual to get yourself to that point. But I do, I do find it interesting. First of all, two things. I don't feel like it's that much of a leap. When the shows, the singing contest started to incorporate phone calling, mm-hmm. and texting, uh, American Idol being the one that I used exactly. to see a lot, where they say text two 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 to uh-huh, this, uh-huh. and then that means you voted for Eddie, right? Mm-hmm. So I, it's not that big of a leap to me when you start to count streams. It seems like actually a more effective way because now at least with the texting, you could get you, Jane, and Sue to keep texting, mm-hmm. whereas the streaming, you kind of have to sit through the stream. And not only that, with texting, you, clip, can get a, you, know. you can get a more accurate count. That's with the uh, texting. See? It's more accurate because if they're not deleted, you can go back and count them. Whereas with streaming, as we have seen in the past, people inflate numbers. Well, I I, I don't know about <laughs> that, but I do agree with the following, which is how do they count like half view, half views? Meaning, what if you don't sit through the clip? Maybe you only mm-hmm. have a few seconds. You go, oh, I can't stand over on. And you move on to the next mm-hmm. person that you're viewing. and, and or, do they, or do they count it as soon as you click it? Yes. So there's a lot to this that's interesting. But I do find it um, interesting that they give the power of who will be the next big star to the public. You see, I think about this in this in the context always of house music. While we talk about music business news here, uh, don't mistake us. We are huge house heads. We love vocal house music, a little slower in tempo with a lot of soul and feeling. And so when we discuss these items that are more mainstream or more pop, if you will, I always think about what, how is that a macrocosm for what we're dealing with in the house music community? So I'm thinking, I had a conversation with a buddy of mine, Andy Luna. Shout out to Andy Luna. Hey, and he, Andy. And he was talking about the, finding the next big thing and that there needs to be a bit of a contest, a bit of a drumming up, a, a getting some drama behind house music because right now we don't have enough of, of a flash or controversy or spark to really get the focus on the good music that we're putting out. But, you know, are the people that have the money – have they been identified and are they willing to step up and step out and step in that is to something minor. that may not be as popular right. as pop right because as much because as these things work with funds with funds and you got to have somebody with funds and sometimes we in our dance community we can be so underground that we are truly 
underground. underground. <laughs> That's such a valuable point. Listen to that. That's a very good point. That's all the time we have today. Thank you so much for tuning into the Freedom Radio Hour. Uh, of course, check out EddieDickless.com. One time, the twenty-six. Uh, tw- one time, the release is out now, as well as the You Left Me 2016 remixes. Of course, your man DJ Adam Cruz.com for more of this fantastic music and Capital Radio 91.6 FM and DWOPMusicRadio.com. That's a lot, but we have a good number of partners that we're working with. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great weekend and a great week ahead. We'll see you next time. Yes, it is. Thank you for joining us. FreedomRadioHour.com 91.6 FM. <laughs> much love. Thanks. And also, don't forget to watch us on YouTube. Oh, YouTube. yeah, YouTube.com slash Freedom Radio Hour. Search us out. Peace. Oh, and if you don't, download the app. Oh, that's right. Thank you. <laughs> download the app. Search us out. Peace.